Welcome, beautiful soul. Oh, I can't wait to have this conversation here. We have Alaric with us who has done and started five different businesses before, three of which were started with zero capital, which went on to generate six figures within a few short months. One of them even went on to generate seven figures within 16 months. Now, currently, he is the founder of the largest Facebook marketing community in Singapore with over 1,800 paid students. He's also the creator, creator of Alaric.ai, a trademark brand, the number one artificial intelligence software for coaching on marketing, branding, and sales. He has also been featured in Fox, Market Watch, and Digital Journal for interviewing six, seven, eight, and nine figure entrepreneurs like Lauren Reidinger, co founder of the Billion Dollar Company, Shop.com, and many, many other beautiful souls. So, Larik, I'm so excited to have this conversation with you. Welcome. Awesome. Thank you for having me, Constantine. Yeah. So, I'll ask you the first question. So, you still have five different businesses, right? Three of which went on to do six figures, one of them went to do seven. Were you successful from the first get-go or did it take you a bit of practice together? Okay, very good question. Okay, so maybe I just give you a quick background about my businesses, okay? Yeah. So my first business was a healthy food delivery business. So I still deal with DBS Bank, which is the largest bank in Singapore. And they sent an email to 10,300 of their staff to advertise for us for free, okay? In exchange, mm -hmm. we give them like 40% discount for their employees. So they win, we win, their employees win, okay? Um, I also got a dietitian from the health promotion board which is Singapore's uh, Ministry of Health, to um, endorse the food, to say that this food is healthy, okay? Um, nice. But things didn't do so well. My first day when I, so so like, because they sent an email to so many people, right? We had too many orders. So our first day we had 70 orders and we were selling each meal at about $12. So we were making about like maybe $700 per day. And then our second day, we had 90 orders. But the first day, I went into a problem. So I called everyone to come down. Uh, okay, because DBS Bank has two buildings, okay? It has two towers. Each tower is like 40 or 60 stories high. So everyone had to come down to collect their food. So I called everyone. And by the time I called the 70th person, it took me, let's say, 70 minutes to call the 70th person. So by the time he came down, it was so cold. Uh, he was hungry. There were a lot of complaints. So a lot of people wrote emails to me. I had had a lot of complaints, okay? So second day, I was like, okay, how can I improve this? I became smarter. So I sent SMS to them instead, okay? But the second day, because we actually outsourced our delivery to uh, another delivery partner, and they actually came one hour late. Mm. So stuck in the one hour late, hasn't arrived there. Everyone was waiting, everyone was hungry, okay? So it was a disaster as well, okay? Third day, my cook had to go to the hospital so she couldn't um she couldn't cook and uh, as in, like she cooked everything at like 7 a.m left it there and then we collected it at 10 a.m to serve lunch right so by the time people got their food it was all cold already the fourth day everything was perfect but we had no more customers really because everyone had such a bad experience so 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 my first business um after six months of like, I, I look for the supplier, I look for the kitchen, I built my own website, I learned how to build a website from watching YouTube videos, I look for the packaging myself, I look for the health promotion board ambassador, I look for the for DBS bank to see the deal and everything. But after six months, I made zero. Like, I just made like one dollar, okay? Uh, because I had a kind of a partnership issue. And so like this, one of my partners, like he wasn't adding a lot of value to the business. And he had to go to NS, which is uh, to serve as the army in Singapore. And so he couldn't contribute to the business. I wanted to buy over his shares. He didn't want to sell. At, at first, he wanted to sell because he, he knew uh, he couldn't contribute. But after that, his uh, the other partner was, was his sister told him to continue the business. So he continued. So I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to sell you all my shares for $1. So after six months, technically, I made $1. Okay, so that's my first business. But I took away a lot of experiences and everything from there. My second business was an entrepreneurship platform. So I built a sales team of 140 people in 10 months. So in 10 months, I built a sales team of 140 people. My first month, that time I was 19 years old, okay? My first month, I did about $7,000 in commissions. My fourth month, I did about $11,000 in commissions. At that point of time, there was a lot of money for 19 year old, okay? Of course. And, and, uh, and, and that went on to generate six figures uh, in about 10 months, okay? Uh, my third business is a sales and marketing agency. So I help people to run Facebook ads and all that. And we hit about 5K to 10K uh, running that agency. And then my fourth business, uh, so, so that became a six-figure business as well, okay? Uh, which I still run to today. Uh, yeah. My fourth business is a six-figure e-commerce business selling cosmetics. And that was a six-figure business. 
And my coaching and seminar business, I started from zero with zero capital. And I scaled this to $1.2 million in sales in 18 months. Okay, We hit our 1 million mark in probably about the 16th month. And right now we have thousands of clients in Singapore, Malaysia, Australia, Philippines, Ireland, UK, um, America, etc. And I train them on Facebook marketing, sales, etc. Um, I sell like a one day class for five hundred dollars or a three month coaching program for five thousand dollars. So people like my clients range from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I went on to build my own artificial intelligence software that can coach people automatically. So like. I train you on all my course content. So like instead of me coaching people one-on-one, -on -one, the AI coaches people and I build my own SaaS startups, et cetera, as well. Yeah. Wow. That's an amazing uh, story. So thank you for going in detail a lot. Like, I love the story with the first business, right? That people would call a failure, but yet it wasn't, right? Because you learn so much and you're willing to not accept defeat on the first day and be like, oh, I'm just going to try harder the next day. You actually went and changed every day to see if you can improve and you can make it just that much better. And then you realize that, hey, I'm spinning my wheels very quickly, six months. Some people would be, no, 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 I put so much money and effort. I'm going to try this for another three years. But you realize you went away from it. And then what I loved is that you transition from those, from a business to another at a very, very young age. And you are okay to not going back into the same field. You said, you know what, I've tried this. It wasn't for me. Now I'm moving into this new space, marketing, sales, and everything else. What would you say your biggest lesson was from the first business where you made $1? I learned so much. Like, I mean, to get a health promotion bought dietitian, and she's not just a nutritionist, she's a dietitian, which is higher level than a, than a nutritionist. And I actually only paid her like $200 to get her to endorse my food, okay? Uh, but it's win-win for her because to, to her, I'm promoting her to the whole DBS bank and all that kind of stuff as well. So um, like she was not just making $200, she was getting brand awareness and everything. Um, I honestly wouldn't call it a failure because like how many 19-year-olds could see a deal with DBS bank, you know? Or how many of them could actually, uh, yeah. So so I, I wouldn't call it a failure. And I actually learned a lot of lessons from doing that because, okay, my whole thought process when I did the healthy food delivery business, right, was that okay? I'm gonna. I was selling premium, like twelve dollars per per meal, which is quite expensive in Singapore. Like only people like who are office workers or executives can afford this, right? So I had to think, how can I target those people? So I had to go building by building, right? So at first, I distributed flyers. I distributed like a hundred over flyers and spent so many hours distributing flyers, but only one or two people responded, and that's not enough for me to do a scalable you know, enough business to turn this into a business, right? So I had to think, how, how do I get clients? And, and um, I, I I was thinking, okay, I need to target building by building, okay? And because I don't have the manpower to, serv uh, to service the whole area, the whole financial district, etc., I can only service building by building. So I had to think, how can I service building by building? There's only there's one department that has access to all the database of the building, and that's the HR. So here's what I did. I went for every single HR networking event. So I Google what are some HR networking events. So even though I don't have a HR background, I went for all those events. I met people from Microsoft. I met people from OCBC Bank, etc. Every networking event I went to, I said, I'm looking for people who are in HR. If you have people in HR, please refer me. Okay. And Every, I, I told all my partners to keep a lookout for HR. So er, it was always HR, 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 and we knew that that was the target, okay? So once we closed that deal, okay, um, then we knew that, okay, once we closed DBS Bank, then we closed HSBC, OCBC, et cetera, and that was the plan, you know, to just keep scaling on uh, from there. So, 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 so that's how I learned how to get customers for that business. And like, I, I'm surprised that like, you know, we built the website and everything, you could collect payments. And like, I have completely no coding experience. No, everything was just learned from a YouTube video. It was a, I remember it was a two hour YouTube video. I literally clicked everything that he clicked step by step. And I, and I learned how to build a web uh, e-commerce website that can do food delivery. Yeah. That's amazing. A lot of, I love that. Right. And I agree with you. It's not, a, it wasn't a failure. Yet a lot of us sometimes look back and say, man, I failed at this business and this business. And I love the mentality of saying, no, it's not. It's like, it's a learning opportunity. I mean, again, like you said, how many 19 year olds, it doesn't even matter how old you are, maybe even 20 year olds. How many of us do do it like that? What it's actually, what you stumbled upon, in my opinion, is <laughs> such an underrated aspect of business is building that network. And, and, and again, going outside of it to say, hey, connect me with this type of people because I know they are my target audience. So I would imagine now, if you look back at, you know, the other businesses you've done, 
is probably one of the best ways for you to gain clients. But I'm curious, how do you, how did you expand that to where you are now to to scale to a seven figure business and bring clients in? Is it strictly through referrals or, you know, primarily through referrals or is there another method that you like to use? So the, the main ways I get clients for my coaching business. Okay. So early on, when I first started my coaching business, um, I spent like maybe uh, $200 on Facebook ads. I'll pack a room of um, maybe 10 or 20 people. And then I'll sell them a $500 offer. So let's say, uh, able to $200 into $1,000. And then I'll spend like maybe $500 on Facebook ads and I would make about $2,000 or $4,000, okay? And then I'll spend like $2,000 on Facebook ads, I'll make about $8,000, etc. And so I just scaled from there uh, to the point uh, I, I had a marketer that worked with me and I paid him 50% commissions, okay? And I pay him on the day itself. Most most speakers, they pay their marketers like 30 days later or 15 days later. Yes. But I but I knew that my marketer needs cash flow, right? So because he's going to run ads, he needs to get the money back immediately so they can and more ads, right? If I delay his payment by 30 days, he's going to face some cash flow issues. So I pay him back on the day itself, which not many speakers do, okay? And so so I pay itself and I was speaking about four events per week, okay? Wow. Now, so I was speaking four events a week. At every single event, there'll be about 20 to 40 attendees, okay? Uh, and I would make $4,000 to $12,000, okay? I had a $2,000 two-day class, okay? If two people buy, it's $4,000. If six people buy, that's $12,000, okay? So at every single event, the minimum I'll make is $4,000, okay? So imagine doing that, uh, and I was doing four events a week. So I was making about, let's say, $16,000 a week or even $20,000 a week. So it reached a point where I was scaling and I was spending $30,000 a month on Facebook ads, and I was gener generating about $100,000 in a month. Yeah. And this was working like four hours a day, you know, or maybe uh, 16 hours a week. Yeah. Because yeah. the rest is just like, it was just speaking, you know, the rest is just like settling accounts and just, yeah, doing other stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And so I'm curious then, so you're making good money there, right? What is something, something within you, right? You likely have a much bigger vision. What made you go, okay, I need to do more now. I need to do something else. I need to do something different. Okay, that's a very good question. So after I made my first million, right, I actually semi-retired, okay? So I actually spent six months in a, uh, in UK, okay? I had a girlfriend in UK. She was a medical student. So uh, I just spent six months over there. And even while I was in UK, my net worth still increased uh, even when I hardly worked. Uh, like I was literally semi-retired, okay? And then after I came back to Singapore, then I went to Silicon Valley to attend Draper University. Uh, it's an entrepreneurship school opened by this billionaire venture capitalist called Team Draper. So I stayed in Silicon Valley in California. And then I went to Texas. And then after that, I spent 18 months traveling around the world. So literally like three months in America, three months in Ecuador, one month in Colombia, three months in Brazil, three months in Spain, went to Malaysia for a short while, went to Bali for like one month, then Germany, and then came back to Singapore for a short while. And then and go to like Greece, Israel, Egypt, uh, Jordan, etc., etc. Okay, so total I spent about 18 months uh traveling uh consecutively. And I really enjoyed that life. Like, of course. I, I really enjoyed the traveling life, but at the same time, I knew that I wasn't playing at the level that I that I should be playing at. But at the same time, I asked myself, okay, which would make me a happier person in life? Uh, if I were to look back and say that when I was 25 years old, I traveled the world, or would I rather say when I was 25 years old, I, I built an eight-figure business? And something in me just knew that, hey, you know what? I think having this experience would be more valuable. And so I don't regret like doing that because like how many people have that experience, right? And I'm, I'm not doing it because I'm comparing myself with other people, but I just enjoy traveling. And I enjoy, I just enjoy checking into a new hotel, uh, going to see a new environment. I, I just enjoy that feeling. I've checked into probably 50 or 100 different hotels. Okay. Um, so 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 so, so I, I did that. And and to be honest, because I did that, it actually affected my business quite a bit as well. Because like after that, when I try to start my business again, it's a lot more, it's it's a lot harder. Because in business there's a momentum, right? So like once you're on a momentum of success, it's e like once you have a proven offer, it's easy for affiliates to promote you. Once you have a proven offer, it's easy to run ads. You know, like it's just a momentum of success. And to, to build that momentum from scratch again was hard. But at the same time, I wanted to challenge myself and say that, hey, you know what? I can start from ground zero again. 
and scale scale again. Yeah. So like we we scaled to six figures easily. Uh, within like like yeah like uh e even when, like I'm just restarting. I I I built a new SaaS company, a software company, and in about thirty days, we hit six figures in sales. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. So this is this is the Alaric.ai you're talking about, right? Okay, so for Alaric.ai, we probably hit about mid five figures in sales. And then we also launched Omniconvo.ai, which is an AI ah. chatbot platform. And that uh I was doing a lot of high tickets calls as charging like three thousand dollars per sale, and we had about uh 30 to 60 clients, okay. Uh and then uh I also built AI AI ads engine, okay, which is a, a software that can allow people to build their, like, generate images and videos for advertisements, okay? So, like, the whole software allows you to research on competitors, it allows you to generate images, and it allows you to generate videos. So, uh, that's the newest project I'm working on, uh, but yeah. That's exciting. I mean, I want to go back to the story you shared, right? Like, you, you semi-retired, you did a travel, and then something within you was like, I want to do, I want to do more. And you said, you know, you want to scale to an eight-figure business. But let me ask you a different question. I feel like there's a bigger vision be below the surface. Like money is cool. You get to travel. You you do lots of things with it. But what would you say is the main driver behind the money? Like why do you want the success? Why do you want the, the eight-figure business? And if it's money, that's fine. But I know I have a feeling there's more for you. That. Yeah, for me, it's not so much about the money because I'm honestly quite a thrifty person. Like even when I I fly or what, I, I don't splurge on business class and stuff. I, I, I'm i okay. If I would save time, okay, if I can use money to buy time, I would use money to buy time because time is something we cannot get back. Time is not a re renewable resource, okay? Yeah. But I wouldn't use money to buy luxury because I, 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 I didn't grow up from a rich family. I grew up from a pretty, like my mom worked and supported the whole family of five of us. She had a salary of maybe like $2,000 to $3,000 a month. And she had to support all five of us. My dad stayed at home to take care of us, okay? So I didn't come from a rich family. And so, and, and my dad's very thrifty as well. So so I, I picked up a lot of habits that are very thrifty, you know? So even when I made money, right, I, I was still very, very thrifty. I didn't, I didn't spend money stupidly, okay? Um, so it's definitely not the money. But what I enjoy is the person that I become uh, in the in the pursuit of it, okay? Yes. Like, I just enjoy the growth. Like, for example, why did I start this software business? Is because I told myself, hey, it'll be quite fun if I do a software business. And, like, I, I think it's pretty fun, you know? So, I decided to embark on it. And it's really a lot harder than I thought. Like, coming from a coaching background, I thought, hey, I know how to do marketing. I know how to do sales, right? But selling software is so much harder. Like, the amount of customer support, the, it, is, it drives me nuts. Sometimes people will message me and they ask me stupid IT questions, you know, that is like, uh, you know, I just, and I already have a support staff and then hiring the support staff and then like, you know, making sure, sometimes she misses the calls and all, it was a huge headache, okay? So, learning to run this software business has not been easy as well. But I, I, I really enjoy like, I just enjoy learning new things, yeah. Yeah, that's such a beautiful mindset. I mean, I want to celebrate that. Like, And those <laughs> listening, like, how awesome is that? To become, like, enjoying the process of the person you're becoming. That's mm -hmm. something that not many people get to say, and I and I want to celebrate you for that. And if you're listening to this, look back at your life. Are you celebrating the person you're becoming and looking forward to it? Because that's so powerful. That's an amazing quote. Now, let me ask you this, uh, this question here, Alaric. If money was not a concern, you had a billion dollars in the bank, you would never run out. What would you do with your life? Would you travel all over the world? Would you start a different type of business and, and look at life differently? What would change for you? I would teach people how to make money. Like okay. if money was not a concern, I would teach people how to make money and, and, and which is what I'm doing. And I'll share with you why. Um, one thing I'm a bit pissed off with the whole coaching industry, right? I mean, I'm a coach myself, okay? And yeah. um, it reached the point where there's only, like, because Facebook ads and YouTube ads have gotten so expensive, the only way you can survive as a coach in the coaching industry right now is if you sell high ticket, okay? So something like $5,000, $10,000, et cetera. And um, I, I, I used to do that, okay? But the problem, right, is that a lot of times, 
because coaching is a two-way street, right? So like the client has to do the work and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes even when people pay $5,000, they don't watch the videos, they don't come for the classes, they don't implement, etc. And then they don't get the results. But the good thing is that they don't blame the coach. Somehow, okay, the coaching industry, like the guru, like the gurus can just get away with it because um the clients don't really blame them, okay? But at the same time, I've, I, I've, I paid for coaching where I didn't get the results. I didn't go and blame them, but like, you know, I felt you know, like, I know I'm not someone that doesn't implement, but you know, okay. Yeah. So I think it's a two-way thing, which is why um now I, I'm trying to change it to a completely different model where people only pay me a percentage of their sales, okay? So I don't, I don't charge them $10,000 up front. I give them all my courses, all my softwares, all my coaching, a weekly coaching calls, done with you coaching, uh, one-to-one WhatsApp assess to me, et cetera, okay? And they only pay me 10% of their sales. They keep 90%. And I believe that this will be, and I, I believe I'm the only one doing this. No other coach dares to do this because no other coach um, is willing to put their money on the line and say, hey, you know what? I'm so confident that my system works. I'm willing to do this, okay? So, so I'm going to launch this where people give me 10% of their sales, okay? And think about it. If let's say each person makes $20,000 a month, 10% is $2,000. If I just get 100 clients, that's $200,000, okay? If I just get 20, uh, if I just get 10 clients, that's $20,000 a month in passive income, okay? I mean, not really passive, like in recurring income because I still have to do coaching and all that, right? But it's in recurring income. And that's pretty good money. Why? Because to make 20K per month in recurring income, that's 200K per year. Now, if you want to make 200K per year in the stock market in dividends, you will need to have maybe about five, uh, okay, about... $4 million, okay? You need a $4 million invested in the stock market to generate a dividend of 200K per year, okay? Because 5% dividends, right? Oh. So if I just get a 10 clients that get to 20K per month, that's equivalent to me having $4 million in the stock market. So that's how I'm looking at things and that's the direction I'm going. Now I'm looking for passive recurring income. So it's a different model from making active income because I'm, I'm done with the sales calls and the high ticket closing and all that. Now I just want to make, they only pay get results, et cetera. Yeah. I love that, Taladik. Wow. I, 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 I mean, I love the way you think. I love the way you, you explain it as well because it is very, very true. Like in the coaching industry, I've... So in the last 18 months, I've invested high five figures in coaching business, probably close to six figures right now in different coaches. And you're absolutely right. It's a two-way street. And I've noticed that even like the highest I paid was a failure materially, but I was able to make the most of it because I put the time in, but they dropped the ball. And mm -hmm. there was no repercussion, right? There's not much one can do. And then yeah. the more you run into people like this, where they, they do a good talk before, but then they don't deliver, Mm -hmm. the more people get put off. And that's actually a lot more common in this space. And I found something else I'm curious to see what you think is like, for example, I'm a coach too, right? So the way I do my coaching, very similar to yours, first of all, there's a 100% money back guarantee for me. It's like, you know, we'll split the payments up. And then if you're not happy at any point in time, you get all of it. I'm about results. So I can stand behind it. Even if it's like 90 days later, you're not seeing results, you get the money back. But I like your approach too. Now, here's the thing. I'm about getting people their results meaning that i have my methods but how do we how do we get you to find your own methods using the guidance of what i have learned and i have helped others with and it sounds to me that maybe you're doing something similar like when you coach people do you ask them to follow a specific system or help them find the system that works for them given the tools you have developed so i have teaching and I also have coaching, right? So in teaching, I'll teach them what is currently working for me right now. What are the funnels that are generating like $20 cost per appointment, okay? Like we are getting uh, appoint uh, funnels where when we run ads, Facebook ads, right? We're getting appointments at $20. So imagine you sell a $1,000 or $5,000 or $10,000 product, you're definitely going to be profitable. So I share exactly how I build the funnel, how I set up the emails, how I set up the landing page, how I set up all this, okay? So that's teaching. So I teach them what works, and I teach them, uh, you know, like what's working right now, and then they can implement them. And I also have coaching. And coaching is done with them, okay, where literally they share their Zoom screen with me, 
And then I tell them, okay, uh, or sometimes I even control their screen. You know, in Zoom, you can control their screen, right? So I literally help them to click and say, okay, this is how you write the copy. This is where you click to run the ad. This is how you build this landing page, et cetera. So I literally do it with them. Um, so yeah, basically that's how, how, how I, I, yeah, how that's, I do that's it. Awesome. Yeah. So, okay, Alaric, what's your vision for the next five years? Where would you want to be in your business, in your life? What, what's, what's that big goal you have? So I, I just got married about almost a year ago. Okay. So <laughs> thank you. So um now my my goal is number one to be a, a good husband and a good father, okay, to be able to make time for my kids and everything. And um in my business, I want to earn monthly recurring income, uh passive income, hopefully, right? And yeah, that's my that's my goal, uh, to earn monthly recurring income. And uh, it's a comp it, and it's it's different from earning active income, okay? Because I've earned active income before, um, but now I just want to earn recurring income so that you know, like, yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then yeah, to be happy and then to eat supplements, to go to the gym about maybe three times a week. Uh, I eat supplements every morning, uh, to like for my mind, for my eyes, for different parts of my body, like just yeah. And then, um, yeah, to think positive thoughts and and also in terms of spirituality, to, to, to be more spiritual, yeah. Okay, I love all of that, Alaric. Well, oh my, okay, I, I had so much fun with uh, getting <laughs> to know you better and everything you shared. I know our audience will as well. This is this is brilliant, and I love to follow your progress. And then maybe in six, twelve months, we we'll do this again to see what new things you've seen, how you've grown, because really to me, that's the, that's where you get to really see someone uh, some or learn from someone is when you see them grow and you realize that there are mistakes as we call them, right? Or opportunities to learn. And that there's things that have worked and looking at both going to give you so much value. So Alaric, thank you so much, brother. Thank you. Nice talking to you. Perfect. Let's stop the recording.